guys and welcome to this episode of the Bad Idea Bros. So you saw in the last one that we got the uh, little red parts bike pulled down, all the parts we needed have been salvaged and the heavens opened up and stopped us from finishing it. So today we're back at it. Uh, Josh's blue scooter is basically ready to be put back together. Um, the weather is a bit grey again today so hopefully we can have time to get it finished. Uh, it could be a bit tight. But uh, this is really exciting because we are getting very close to having that little blue one running again. And once that's running, I can work on my bike. So guys, we're going to get into this. Hope you enjoy. I don't know how we're going to get the um, piston rings back in um, and in the right spot. We'll just take our time and do it carefully. So guys, you have uh, would have seen this was pulled apart in the previous episode. Um, we decided to put it together off camera. It didn't really need to be filmed. If you want to see how it goes together, watch the previous episode in reverse. Um, <laughs> That's a good idea. But no, basically what we're up to now is we're putting the uh, bearing pin and piston head from the donor bike onto this one. So hopefully it all should go reasonably smooth. We've got uh, Josh here with the finesse of a surgeon trying to put this little bugger back together. <laughs> You're showing the grey hairs there, Josh. Very much. I've been working hard on those. <laughs> there we go. That's in there now. Excellent. So, uh, sir, clip on the end to make sure it stays where we've put it. We'll give the piston mm. a bit of a wipe down, offer up the sleeve. I am going to find some needle nose pliers because if we drop that in the bottom end, we're going to have to pull the whole thing apart again. Let's not do that. The uh, size of this piston make your hands look giant. <laughs> Sorry to distract you Some there. Some would say I've got large hands. <laughs> well, uh, not touching that with a 10-foot pole. Oh, <laughs> uh, dear. Hey, that, there we go. That's that almost too easy. So that's uh, the little retaining circlip in there, if you can see. So on to the next part, which is uh, probably going to be the hardest part, trying to get the sleeve onto this thing, because we need to make sure all the piston rings are aligned correctly and that... They compress enough to get the sleeve over safely without uh, scoring it to buggery. About the right spot. Make sure the bottom's close enough. The concentration. Oh, you need it. Yeah. You see that bottom ring's already shifted, which is going to make it a little bit harder. Oh. Look at that. Oh, it's going on. All right, before you send it home, the gaskets will move considerably. Yeah. Ah, better, we'll still spin with that sitting there anyway. Though. Look at that. Like a bought one. It's such a rusty piece. Like, I think it's still in pretty good condition. Oh, the insides are awesome. Um, it's probably just corroded. I'd say this thing's been sitting outside next to a shed or something. Oh, for a long like, time, yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah. Well, that's the only cast iron bit in it around the engine. Everything else is aluminium. So yeah. if that's corroded, I'd be worried. <laughs> not bad. A wee copper gasket. Front. she goes. Hopefully that bottom gasket's lined up enough. I uh, don't hear any crunching horrible noises. So. <laughs> That's because it's paper. <laughs> Excited man? She theoretically oh, should man. be running by the end of the day. I can't wait to see this thing going, eh? <laughs> Just smoking down the road. <laughs> that should be good. So that's got a finger tight anyway. So what we'll do now is uh, find the um, torque specs, yeah, torque specs yeah. on this thing and we'll, we'll crank it up and next we'll start to put some parts back on it. I don't know if I've got a small enough torque wrench. That's actually a really good point. Uh, well, let's see what the rating is first and we can go from there. One uh, or two uh, uh's. Well guys, you know things are getting serious when the wheel's going on. Let's see if I've got the right size socket. There, there we, go. we go. If you guys remember from the previous episode, this was basically not done up. 
so we will rectify that problem now. And I hate to say it, I don't jinx this, but it's all seemingly going quite well. Hopefully it all goes on properly. <laughs> Still spinning. Job done. Well, it's not wobbly now, so the bearing's good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've uh, pulled blue out of storage, and you can see red behind. Um, we're going to basically just drop this whole piece into that gap there, and hopefully it'll go. Oh, hopefully it actually starts on this one, which we can at least put a carby on it and yep, get so petrol properly going through it. Yeah, exactly. So we've got all your carby and everything from the previous um, yep. motor that we tore down, and the starter motor on this one is good. We know that. I think the starter motor on the red one's a little bit questionable because it wasn't really doing what we wanted it to do. I know it could have been the connections we had on that. Um, well, yeah, yeah. On our leads. True, that wasn't wasn't the uh, the most optimal situation, but it proved the point. Yeah, so, the job. All right, let's uh, chuck this in. We're getting into the home stretch now. Josh is just uh, putting the carburetor back on. Fuel line was donate, uh, donated by the previous bike, the red one, the donor bike is what I'm trying to spit out there. Um, we've also pulled a few other bits and pieces off um, that the red bike had, the blue one didn't. Just some sundry stuff, so like the uh, breather hose that runs down here from the battery box. So we got that off the red one because the blue one didn't have it. And the battery box itself, the um, the blue one was basically naft, um, as is the fuel hose or delivery main line. So that's being swapped out from the red one, and looks like Josh is in the final stages of getting the carburetor on now. We've got some wiring to plug in, uh, throttle cable to put on, and then we can attempt to start this thing. Alright guys, we uh, may not have noticed the camera going flat there, so my apologies, but as you can see that is a much more complete looking bike. Um, we've just got the coils left to put on, Josh is about to throw some fuel in it now, carburetor is on, all the wiring is done, throttle cable's in position. Put so, some um, oil in too, eh? just in yep, case. Yeah, a bit of oil in. Oil, fuel, spark, and we'll be away. Getting exciting. Right. In goes the oil. Got a nice little level there. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's bleeding. Oh uh, shoot. It's not the first time. Alright. Not the first time it's hemorrhaged. No, it should be a lot better off than it was before. Alright, well that's the oil. That's the oil. Next with some fuel. Unleaded only. 
the interesting thing about these guys is that you don't put two stroke mixed fuel in the tank it's just straight fuel the oil is done by an oiler which is what you saw us fill then I've seen some other videos where people have chucked uh, oil mixed fuel in these and they smoke like a banshee for good reason that shall be enough enough petroleum all right so guys you can see the spark plugs exposed so next we'll get the coil on which is these two wires connect him up to the plug put a battery at it and hopefully you'll hear Josh's bike running for the first time Turn the fuel tap on. <laughs> oh, we'll give that a second. Oh, come on. Command you.